Now, Director Will, I'd like to tell you a story about a magical, mystical animal that has loved the world over. My name is Bertie, and this is Borneo from Below. What do you get if you cross the head of a horse with the snout of an aardvark, eyes of a chameleon, pouch of a kangaroo, and tail of a monkey? Looking like the love child of numerous species, the seahorse's Latin name is Hippocampus, which means horse caterpillar. Oddly enough, one of the only creatures a seahorse doesn't look like. Seahorses are often found eating. In fact, they can chomp up to 3,000 pieces of food a day, as they don't possess a stomach. It's pretty much in and out, so a seahorse must constantly eat to stay alive. Where's my dinner? Seahorses have the ability to move each eye independently. Not only do they look unique, but seahorses are the only creatures on Earth to have a reverse pregnancy, in which the male gives birth to the young. Once the female passes her eggs to him, he will then fertilize them in his pouch before giving birth to up to 1,500 young at a time. Pretty neat, huh? Today I'm in St. Porna on an assignment for Scuba Diver magazine. So I'm diving with the guys at Scuba Junkie and we're off to what is rumored to be one of the seahorsiest dives around. Now seahorses tend to like mucky environments and seagrass beds, so it might not be pretty down there, but let's see what we can find. Okay, lights, camera, action. Finding seahorses here is like going on one big treasure hunt. They can often be found lurking in nooks and crannies and are perfectly disguised against mucky backgrounds. However, once I spotted one, I got my eye in and it became seahorse soup. Getting eye contact with these bashful beauties can be difficult, so as a photographer, patience is required. Once the seahorse gets used to your presence, the photographic results can be great. Keep flash at a minimum as this can harm or even kill these delicate souls. Due to their dinky size, compact camera users, be sure to set your camera to macro mode. For bigger setups, a separate macro lens is a must, along with a diopter for super close-up shots. Oh, what a fascinating dive site. Might not exactly be sparkly coral reefs, but there's still so much going on down there. And most of all, a couple of different species of seahorses. And now I think it's time to go back and have a shower. That night, director Will had a dream of a lumpy, bumpy, itsy-bitsy seahorse smaller than he could believe. The following morning, we went searching for this mythical miniature. I've come to Bowie de Lang. It's an island just north of St. Porna, and I'm on the hunt for the teeny tiny pygmy seahorse. Now, these guys are so small, I've enlisted the help of a magnifying glass to help me find it. Finding an animal that's just a few millimetres long can be seriously challenging, which is why I have eagle-eyed Nass with me today. Because if anyone can find these guys, Nass can. So Nass, what are we looking for? Um, they hang out in the uh, sea pen. Okay. Yeah. And are there many down here? So many. So yeah, many? Yeah, so many. So we've got good chances of finding them. And hopefully we can spot one of these guys because they are one of my favourite marine animals. The animal we're looking for is Hippocampus bargibanti, which are sometimes found at this site on Gorgonian fans, though very rarely on the first fan you come across. Borneo from Below's usual animal hunt often goes search, don't find, and then eventually uncover just in the nick of time. However, this time we had Nas with us. seahorses are really imaginatively named because, you guessed it, they're very small. 
They range from between 1.4 to 2.7 centimetres in length. Yet this pygmy seahorse was no match for the lethal combination of NASA's peepers and my magnifying glass. This little fella will spend its entire life perfectly camouflaged chilling on this sea fan. Its bulbous turbicles mirror the sea fan's polyps, whilst its body looks uncannily like a gorgonian stem. A bizarre juxtaposition of lumps and bumps, trout pout and killer frown, this seahorse is one of the most photogenic animals to be found on reefs. You don't really get a sense of the pygmy seahorse just looking with your bare eyes, but when you go through the camera screen and you zoom in on that face, you've got those funny pursed lips and the big frown and then these weird pimples everywhere. They're such funky looking animals. Love them. Good man. We owe this man a beer. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that seahorses are some of the most intriguing and charismatic creatures found in our oceans. However, all isn't well in the world of seahorses. Unfortunately, as is the case with much of the world's marine life, they aren't immune to the threats posed by mankind. Every year, 150 million plus seahorses are used in the traditional medicine trade. At this rate, the seahorse is galloping towards extinction. Today I'm in the Kampong Ayer, which is the water village, and one of the local fishermen has agreed to take me out and show me how they traditionally catch seahorses. So we've rocked up to our first destination and this is exactly the sort of environment that seahorses like. It's quite shallow, it's quite mucky, so we'll jump in and see if we can find any. Alaska was just scouring the seabed for seahorses and we happened across a seahorse trader, a real life seahorse trader called Harissa. And here we are, she sells dried seahorses that her husband catches at night time. So she's agreed to answer a few questions for us. Mau tiga, empat biji begitu rapatnya. Kalau banyak dia dapat sampai sepuluh saja. Aku tidak tahu sejak itu aku menjual sejak di pekan jual beli sama saya. Aku tidak apa apa tahu apa kah bikin apa apa orang. Whilst we might adore seahorses, in an area where it's difficult to make a living, people are simply doing what they have to in order to survive. After yet more failure at another regularly visited collection site, the fishermen headed to their final location of the day, a shallow reef close to our morning departure point. The sites that we've been to today are the ones where the fishermen traditionally caught seahorses and we've been looking around for a long time and have found absolutely nothing. Whether this is an indicator that there are none left, I don't know, but the future around here for seahorses isn't looking good. Then just as the day was drawing to a close, their relentless searching finally seemed to have paid off. Spotting a large male seahorse amongst the weed, one fisherman swam down and simply plucked it from the reef. Whilst this is an incredibly simple fishing technique, you can see just how much hard work goes into catching just a few individuals. And now for the next stage to see where they end up. I'm here outside a typical Asian market. Now these places sell literally thousands of products that come from the ocean. But the animal that I am most interested in, of course, is the seahorse. So I'm hoping that one of the vendors here will spare just a couple of minutes of their time and talk to me a little bit about the industry. So as you can see there are simply a huge number of dried fish products here. We've got fish, shrimp, seaweed, squid, and of course, seahorses. Now there must be around 30 to 40 seahorses in this bag here, which is more than I've ever seen in my entire diving career. After checking out some of the goods on offer, a seahorse trader by the name of Bud agreed to have a chat. How much do the seahorses cost? Uh, it's it's, uh, one kilo, one thousand ringgit. One thousand ringgit for one kilo? One thousand ringgit for one kilo. Okay, and how many seahorses in one kilo? It's about 
Hundred. Why do people buy seahorses from you? Uh, not all the people, but only the Chinese religion. Chinese religion, they know about the secret of the And why do they buy them? The Jewish community. And why are there two seahorses together? If you want, uh, if you want to medicine, it must be femur in yeah. It's particularly poignant seeing two seahorses together and hearing how they're often consumed as a pair because many sources say that seahorses will actually mate for life and if one of them is killed the other will die of a broken heart. So there you go, we've seen the seahorse trade on a very small scale but rumours have it that there are literally thousands of them sold at nearby stores. Now these people aren't doing anything illegal, but they might be a little bit funny about being filmed, so we switched to pet cat. Inside the shop were bags upon bags of dried seahorses, which the traders seem more than happy to talk to me about. We're looking for unduk unduk. Unduk unduk. Unduk unduk seahorses. Wow. A lot of seahorses. So how do you do it? Just uh, do you eat, eat them? No. You, you steam it in the with a slow cooker and then you bring it. Steam it. Ah, steam. And then drink it. Yes. And then it makes you strong. Yes. Where do you get them from? You take a fish, uh, a fish, Oi. and then you can get a seahorse. Really. <laughs> so in a big net? Ah, yeah, okay. Object now. And do people go looking for the seahorse or they catch other fish and then they uh, find seahorses? Anything in the net. Anything? Yeah. And then the seahorses get caught? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's particularly sad witnessing so many thousands of dead seahorses. And that's especially as divers seldom get to see them. This is because A, they're incredibly rare, and B, because they're clearly being decimated in huge numbers out here. With their weird looks, romantic tendencies, and reverse pregnancy, seahorses are indeed special little characters. However, Director Will, soon they might just be the stuff of fairy tales. Good night. If you were moved by the plight of the seahorse, then you too can get involved by donating to our Patreon campaign. 50% of the money that you pledge will go directly to the Seahorse Trust, whilst the other 50% will be used to help fund future Borneo From Below episodes. Simply follow the link below, and thank you for watching. Oh, and if you'd like to learn more about these little legends, then why don't you come and see me give a talk at ADEX in Singapore? which in 2016 is dedicated to all things seahorse.